But then you learn to like listen to the layers, right? So like there's a vireo, there's somebody doing this other, there's our oven bird. It's like a cacophony of sound, right? Like all around us. We are here at the Green Mountain Audubon Center in Huntington. And today we are going to take a walk in the woods with birder, Debbie Archer. And we're birding this morning. So there's 255 acres here that are open and free to the public every day of the year from sunrise to sunset. So that's an oven bird. Classic, like, that's like the sound of Vermont in the woods to me. Birds are great, they're everywhere. From cities to deserts to Antarctica. And so you can have those, those wild moments with a bird. Across our country and state, people are protesting in support of the Black Lives Matter movement, speaking out against racism and police brutality after the killing of George Floyd. And online, black birders have been sharing photos and stories. Black Birders Week happened in a group chat with a bunch of black folks who cared about uh, science, technology, engineering, and math. It came as a response to the racist incident that happened in Ramble Park to Chris Cooper. What can we do to really promote and to really highlight that the black experience goes beyond trauma and that it includes pride and strength and style? And I think we saw a lot of that this week. But I hope something that comes out of Black Birders Week is, you know, maybe other people of color, like, feeling empowered to come together and spend time together outside. Birding definitely teaches you patience. And that folks see us. We're here. We're birding. Get used to it. <laughs> Most of the time that I'm going birding, it's for work. And I'm normally the only black guy there, which brings to some people um, optimistic surprise, you know, when they interact with their first black birder. You know, how do you get involved with this? You know, how do you know so much about birds? And doing other things in the outdoors, right? Like hiking and kayaking and canoeing. Like somehow the idea that black people don't do those things um, exists. And I definitely understand and know that there are places where um, people of color feel unsafe in the outdoors. There's also the fact that Black folks will always feel targeted in this country from police officers. I mean, I can just say specifically, I know that I feel that way. I love wearing hoodies, and I'm wearing one right now. Um, but I would definitely think twice if I were to wear this hoodie to go out birding, uh, no matter the time of day. It makes me think about the fact that I also don't bird alone. I almost exclusively bird in groups. That I've always had this, like, emergency plan in my mind, and it's like, one, my way to like diffuse situations, I'm like the overtly friendly person. So like, oh, hey, like you should check out like there's like score tanagers just around the corner, right? I'm like very clearly though, like letting people know what I'm doing, which has been an interesting thing reflecting on, right? As other black birders have been sharing their stories, like I totally do that. Somebody was making a nest. It looks like they left it. There you are. So I've been birding for about 10 years. I'm definitely a casual birder. I'm not a morning person. Like, I know these woods. I can come out here, I can be quiet, I can sit and I feel comfortable and I feel refreshed. A bird just flew right behind your head. <laughs> Audubon Vermont is a state office of the National Audubon Society. And our mission is to protect birds in the places they need today and tomorrow. And I hope that from the pandemic of so many people now birding, because like, it's a thing we're all noticing, like, oh my gosh, there are birds here. There are birds everywhere. They literally come to my house. And I love that people have been paying attention and noticing. And I know that that will lead to some conservation actions. And it's like, here I am. Where are you? Here I am. Where are you? Birding has just given me like a different lens on conservation, on connecting with the nature where you are. Aha, black and white warbler. And so ultimately like that led me <laughs> to being sort of like a crazy bird person. And they would start asking me bird questions because then you become like the bird person. And it's like, I don't know what that is, but like, let's, we can like figure it out. Let's go figure it out. It's just such a nice way to connect with people too. Like there's so many layers to birding. You know, I've been having a lot of fun watching birds and meeting people that also care about birds. So that was the yellow-bellied sapsucker. They found this perfect 
standing dead snag. Woodpecker's physiology is like unreal. We have kids come here all year round. Let's just get kids outside. And some of them will come out being conservationists. Some of them will come out, you know, having a new way to recreate. We work with thousands of people every year. So that's like hopefully thousands of people that walk away and are like, oh, well, Debbie's a naturalist at Audubon. I could be a naturalist at Audubon. I think Black Birders Week is, is, is going to be a reality check to a lot of folks. It has been a re reality check to a lot of folks. And I hope that that will bring that, you know, a future where more black people are just in these jobs. You know, more black people find these careers. More black people have stories in these careers. Oh, hey, there's a red squirrel. There was a great post. Someone said, it's like, black people are tired. We can't go for a run. We can't go birding. We can't be grilling, right? You can't enjoy your local park. And it's like, I'm so tired. Having a foundational understanding of how racism worked, how this country is built on stolen land with stolen labor, as dramatic and as traumatic as that may sound, Having that foundation of understanding where society is today, you'll, you'll see that racism and anti-black racism specifically is in the fabric of this country. Here in Vermont, people are like, oh, there's like not black people here. There's black people here, okay? We have a tiny state, okay? <laughs> I get it, we're rural, we have a low population, but to say there's no black people here is like just giving yourself permission to not look and to not listen. So um, yeah, Vermont, like keep up the protests. <laughs> um, keep engaging with one another like we're here even in our tiny little green mountain state that's our beery that's the beery but he's just up there and he's singing he's like found a perch and he's singing oh, and it's just like such a beautiful song hopefully like the protests and all of the attention that black communities are getting right now yeah hopefully that too will like paired with the Black Birders Week, we'll just like continue to like lift up the community. <laughs> you can still hear our sap sucker. You can learn more by following Black AF in STEM and searching for these hashtags. We hope that all of you take care and that real change comes about because we need it. This is the time where it'd be really great for like a Scarlet Tanager or a Baltimore Oriole <laughs> to just land. <laughs> Do they do that in cute? <laughs> Just like, <laughs> right there, please. <laughs> so my job is to get people outside. I mean, you got me awake at 7 a.m., which is unusual. <laughs> <laughs>